So I'm Clarissa. I'm one of the core committee members of Bristol Airport Action Network. Um, and we've just got the go-ahead from the courts to release the result. So unfortunately, with great sadness, I have to announce that the judge has rejected our challenge. Shame! 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 So I thought we could just take a minute, uh, you know, to express what you want. day-to-day -day business of this legal action and we will say a few explanatory words. So I'd like to introduce uh, Stephen Clark um, from the Court of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tricia, very much. Um, so oh, this is a very, obviously, very disappointing result. But I'm so glad and I draw such strength from the fact that we're all here together. People who've travelled people who've travelled this long and long and winding and difficult road. However, this is not the end of this long, difficult winding road. The airport applied for expansion at the end of twenty eighteen a long time ago. Together, we have saved millions of tonnes of emissions of carbon into the atmosphere by challenging them. And we are not giving up now. Um, we've taken some initial advice, legal advice, from our KC, Estelle de Hom. Having thought about it very carefully, we have decided as a group, to ask for permission to appeal. Yes. This, this would be to the Court of Appeal. Much of the legal debate in the inquiry, we had a week's discussion about the law in the inquiry, and the discussion here in the court has been about, has been about interpretation of that policy. Of course, the starting point under this administration is, as you would expect, that the odds are towards aviation growth rather than worrying about climate change. This was the airport's arguments, and unfortunately the judge largely agreed with their interpretation of the policy rather than ours. What the airport argued, and the judge agreed with, is that Carbon emissions from planes cannot be considered locally as an issue. They need to be looked at nationally. The problem is, there is no legal obligation for the government to look at them nationally. And what this means, because the government have ignored this application, what that means is that nobody, nobody has considered the carbon implications of a million tonnes of carbon being emitted into the high atmosphere every year. None of the decision makers. No organisation. Not the planning inspectorate, nor the government. None of them have considered this impact. This amount of carbon has effectively not been allowed for in the UK's budget. In another different but related point, the planning inspectors considered the extra emissions from this expansion and they said that on their own they would not threaten the government's ability to meet their climate targets. So just think what that means for a moment. How could this not be the case with an individual project? Other than perhaps a new runway Heathrow, no individual project 
measured by itself, is ever going to be large enough to reach that tipping point. It's crazy. The answer must be to look at all the airports with expansion plans together and make a cumulative assessment of, the car of what carbon would be re released. We ask for this repeatedly. It's completely logical. We ask for it repeatedly, but we were refused. We were refused by the airport, we were refused by the inspectors, and now we've been refused by the judge. So what happens now? Well, we continue to struggle, of course. We still believe, with the fantastic support we see here today and the support we've received over four years, that we can win this battle. Yes. Yes, we can. Bristol Airport is simply large enough. Thank you. Next is Teresa to say a few more. So I wrote many speeches um, and called them up and it's very difficult to know what to say with a result like this. Ten weeks of legal argument and two days at the High Court and we receive a judgment primarily based on a single policy to make best use of the government policy to expand regional airports. Knowing they know that the most polluting way you can travel is to fly. But despite this, the policy was overwhelmingly passed in 2018, encouraging regional airports to put in their expansion plans. And so we have 20 queuing up behind us. Despite Judge Lane saying climate change will be made worse, and I quote him, by the increased carbon from this development, the pol this policy, MBU, trumped all policies written both before and after, whether local, national, or international. This cannot be right. In this policy, it divides up the areas of responsibility for the environment. Local government, government, it seems, by the judgment, has no responsibility about the increased emissions. It's only the Secretary of State who can make a decision about aviation carbon emissions because he holds the legal responsibility in directing the UK to net zero by 2050. Judge Lane went on to say, and this is the worrying part, we should assume that people act lawfully. And I quote, it has to be assumed the Secretary of State will comply with the legal duty under the Climate Change Act to reach net zero. He doesn't. The judge didn't say this once or twice in the report. He said it at least 20 times. Well, I've looked at Goh's voting record, and it's not a good look. He's consistently voted against environmental and green issues. On close analysis, one could surmise that he's actively working against net zero. The UK's legally binding responsibilities under the Climate Change Act. The way the Secretary of State is dealing with net zero was found in another recent court case to be unlawful, inadequate, and opaque. So when the judge says we don't have to worry about airport expansion and the extra carbon emissions because the Secretary of State is keeping a close eye on it all, we have to respond together. There is a whiff of climate denialism a whiff of climate delay baked into our planet and legal system. The judge said himself, this case is happening at a time of code red for humanity. We are still acting as canaries. What the earth and our survival needs is more people.
to step forward together and say no. We can't have continued airport expansion. We need to pause. We need to take stock. We new, need new ways to live and play. We will take this all the way if we get permission to the appeal court. And I um, want to say please come to our rally on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Tricia. So, although Justice Lane's 86-page judgment concentrates on the specifics of planning laws, he also highlights the wider context of climate change and aviation emissions. This is contained in two brief paragraphs as follows. The introduction reads as follows. Climate change, with its consequences for human and other life on this planet, is generally regarded as a matter of very great importance. In the same month in which this appeal was heard in Bristol, world leaders and other policy makers gathered at Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, for COP27 in order to discuss this matter. There is an international consensus on the need to achieve substantial reductions in CO2 emissions. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change 2021 was widely reported as being a code red for humanity. Such is the present level of concern. Then there are 86 pages of deep, deep dive legal text. But Judge Lane concludes as follows. By way of postscript, I should make clear that nothing in this judgment is to be taken as contradicting what I said in the opening paragraph. That's the one just <laughs> Regarding the significance of climate change and greenhouse gases. As will by now be apparent, the main issue in this case is not whether the emissions from any additional aircraft using Bristol Airport should be ignored. Plainly, they should not. Rather, it is about how and by whom those emissions should be addressed. Thank you all for coming, and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Um, hi, I want to start by saying that I'm incredibly proud of what BAN, Bristol Airport Action Network, and all its many supporters have achieved so far. We've held die-ins, marches, rallies and vigils. We've held roadside protests and done banner drops all over Bristol, even off the suspension bridge. We lobbied and encouraged North Somerset Council to make their momentous decision to reject Bristol Airport's original planning application. We've had a huge ostrich on Western Beach with its head buried in the sand and even had our supporter, Ben Moss, dressed as a pig, climbed up onto the airport roundabout sculpture and he spent the night there. We formed the amazing Bristol landing crew behind me and we've often been accompanied by the... <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful. Uh, by the iconic Red Rebels and now we have the newly formed climate choir here to help us. We've absolutely shown the depth of local feeling against the expansion of Bristol Airport. So I just want to thank you all for being so incredible. We could never have got this far without your generous and heartfelt support. However, like a lot of you here today, I'm feeling sad and I'm feeling angry. Sad that our, up that our appeal wasn't upheld. Angry that local democracy has been thrashed. But I'm not surprised. Planning laws, like all laws, are written by the rich and powerful. Planning law doesn't seem to be about upholding local democracy or protecting the environment or protecting the health of local people. It seems 
It seems to be about protecting business investments and protecting shareholder profits. This appeal has shown that there is a loophole, which Steve mentioned, in the planning process, which is particular to airports. This planning loophole allows airport expansion to be nodded through, while no one at either national or local level needs to take account of the huge additional carbon emissions that will be produced, even though we've declared climate emergencies both nationally and locally. Climate scientist Peter Kalmus recently said that in his view, aviation is a bellwether, so an indicator of how society views the climate crisis. If aviation is still growing, then it means that governments and society at large are still not taking the climate crisis seriously. However, he believes that as, as soon as society recognises the truth of the climate emergency, he is convinced that policies to rein in flying will happen. And we, as BAN, will have to keep pushing to make sure those policies limiting aviation do happen. So, although we haven't had this appeal upheld today, BAN will fight on. We'll fight on to get local voices heard. We'll fight on to fix the aviation planning law mess. And we'll fight on to stop airport expansion. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. We've got to be clear that this 12 million passengers must not happen. Because if it does, it's a stepping stone for applications for 15 million in the mid 2030s and ultimately 20 million in the 2040s. And you might be thinking, well, that's absolutely ludicrous, irresponsible reckless, unbelievable, and what the freaking hell is the airport thinking? Yes. 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 That's 20 million passengers that they've actually got on their website. If you del delve deep, look under corporate, their master plan is there. Master plan. Sounds sinister? Well, it is. And this is the, the problem that the government asked all airports to produce a master plan in the past. And all, per, all airports have actually done that. And of course, they're all putting forward uh, the ambition to expand. And as we know, in the light of reports from the government's own advisors, the Climate Change Committee, they clearly state we're not on course to meet our legally binding targets for net zero by 2050. An increase of emissions from an extra 2 million people is untenable. But ambitions for 20 million people is just believably, unbelievably irresponsible and reckless. The results of the consultations on, Bridgewater, uh, on Bristol Airport's website was written up before Brexit was implemented, before the pandemic, before the cost of living crisis, before the energy crisis. So you're probably thinking, well, they must revise their plans. Well, the answer is no. No, they haven't. Because at Bristol Airport's Christmas do for stakeholders and members uh, of the community, those present were told that 20 million passengers is still their goal. And I'm thinking, well, what planet are they on? Unfortunately, it's the same one that you and I inhabit. So, good neighbours? No way. It's imperative that any expansion of Bristol Airport cannot happen. Us standing here and the many thousands who oppose the airport's plans who cannot be here today we will not let this happen. So join us on Saturday at 12 o'clock at College Green, where people can have their say. Thank you. Landing crew are normally silent, um, but air traffic control at uh, the UN, uh, code red for humanity, have given me a green light uh, to speak uh, just now. Um, why, tell me, has a High Court judge today 
basically agreed that the government's planning inspectors were right last year to disregard our climate considerations. And so where does this leave us now? The people of the West Country living under the flight paths affected by the promise of more noise, more pollution, more traffic, more planes, more night flights even than Heathrow. Did you know that? More aviation emissions, more CO2 in the atmosphere, creating more climate change and extreme weather events. The planning inspectorate claimed that bans climate concerns, our climate concerns, the people of the West Country, have no bearing on expansion, that they are, quote, merely neutral in the balance. The judge, it seems, in spite of the words we heard earlier, more or less agrees. So perhaps we can understand why last year North Somerset's council leader, Don Davies, said he was in disappointed by the inspectorate's decision, which completely, quote, disregards the views of the local people, the local communities. And this blue poster here says it all. Local democracy is being trashed. Local people said no. All of the local councils and authorities have said no to airport expansion. WECA, the West of England Coordinating Authority, have said no. Local MPs, including Tory MPs, have said no. Liam Fox, neoliberal ideologue himself, was against e expansion. But tell me this, why therefore did the government inspectors at the planning inspectorate, headquartered here in Bristol, join the dots? Why did they say these considerations Code red for humanity are neutral in, in the balance as far as their decision making was, was concerned. So I wonder what Don Davis of North Somerset Council and his fellow local authority leaders who I invite to speak to us on College Green on, on Saturday. What are they feeling today? Because all of these councils have declared climate emergencies and they are doing something about it on our behalf. When it came to the airport lodging their planning application, BAN joined with all sorts of groups and, and individuals across the West Country. And 11,000 comments were, were lodged um, against airport expansion. And uh, that, that is a considerable number. Now, of those comments that were, that were lodged for the original planning application, 77% of those comments, were, um, and we have them bound in eight yellow books, 77% of those comments were against expansion. That's what democracy looks like. Not, not the less than 160,000 people Tory, Tory um, party members who voted Liz Truss in uh, last year. That is not democracy. Now, 84% of the comments from North Somerset were against expansion. Let's hear it for Chew Valley, because 93% of the comments were from Chew Valley were against expansion. And tell me, in terms of democracy, how many of us here today are against expansion? <laughs> So it's not just North Somerset Council who've roundly rejected expansion. And their planning committee were really bold because they went against the advice of their planning officers. What I'm pointing at here are the faults of the UK's planning system. And it's no longer fit for purpose, not just the planning law, but the planning inspectorate, the way these decisions are or indeed are, are not made. Let's remember that airport expansion only benefits the narrow commercial interests of the owners of Foreign Pension Fund, the Ontario Teachers Pension Fund, the sixth 
wealthiest in the world. They have no concern about the impact of airport expansion on our air quality and, and on our children. Airport expansion is a white elephant. It flies in the face of all our local communities who have fought so hard to resist expansion. This is not the end of our opposition. Ban, ban, sorry, and all the local and regional groups we work with fight on because good sense, the climate science, and the public are on our side. Today, the alarm bells of Code Red for Humanity are clanging only more loudly. So my name's Jackie, and my job is to tell you about what comes next and how you can help. Essentially, there are two strands of action. Firstly, there's the appeal process, and Steve has already mentioned that. And if we get the right to appeal and we go uh, to, the high, uh, to the appeal court, then there will be legal costs. And so the first ask is that just like you managed to support us amazingly generously so far, our first ask is please support us again financially. Secondly, we know that expanding airports in a climate crisis is plain wrong. Concluding that the climate crisis would be worsened by this expansion and still letting it happen is plain wrong. Saying we must assume the government will meet its climate targets is plain wrong. Not allowing local democ democracy and democratic communities to use the planning system to play their part in curbing emissions is plain wrong. So because Bristol Airport plans to keep expanding, because the government's own minister reports in the recent net zero review that the national planning policy framework is not fit for purpose when it comes to the climate emergency, because even this judge who found against us has said emissions from the aviation industry and the planes cannot be ignored and they have to and they have been ignored nonetheless because of all these things we plan to take our campaign to the national stage so we are calling on all banner makers drummers singers performance artists, politicians, and people who care about the planet to join us this Saturday, the 4th of February, at 12 noon on College Green. We want you to talk to your friends, to your family, to your colleagues at work. We want you to lobby your politicians and ask them to come too. We want the press to cover the event and springboard us into the national media. That's your challenge, Bristol. <laughs> we wish you, we could have given you more notice, but we couldn't. We're law-abiding citizens, and we wouldn't break the embargo. For years, you have helped us to lobby. You have funded our legal challenges. You have spoken out against the expansion. You have attended rallies. You have written articles you have staged pro protests, you have persuaded others. You have been magnificent, and we have always felt your hand on our backs. Together we have saved millions of tonnes of greenhouse gases from entering the atmosphere, and for that reason, we have been an incredibly successful movement. We have much to thank you for, and much to feel proud of. And you have grown our movement, and now we need you to grow it more, to take it to the next level, and we think you will rise to that challenge. This decision is devastating. It is plain wrong. 
It would be easy at this point to feel helpless and to give up. But we believe in active hope. Not the lettuce-like hope of, well, I hope it all goes okay, or I hope it works out in the end. No. We believe in the strong and resilient hope that sets itself determinedly against injustice and says, this is the right thing to do. And so we will lean our hope against the obstacle until something moves. We will turn our hope towards the storm and not be broken. We are the hope and we will fight on. Stop. 